Find all solutions to the system of linear equations, 2x minus 3y equals 2, minus x plus 2y equals 1. Our method's going to be row reduction, which means I need to set up an augmented matrix. Take a look at our system of linear equations. Okay, we have x is in a column, y is in a column, constant terms in a column, and on the other side of the equal signs. So we get our augmented matrix just by peeling off the coefficients. That's how we get the rows. So our rows are going to be 2 minus 3, 2, minus 1, 2, 1. Then I put a bar in where we have equal signs. What's our goal? This matrix on the left, we want to apply row operations to it until I get it in the form 1, 0, 0, 1, if that can be done. If not, we'll settle for row echelon form, however that turns out. Now, our blueprint is going to be we work in a horseshoe. So we start in the upper left-hand corner. I want a 1. Once I have the 1, we work for a 0 in the lower left-hand corner. Then once we have the 0, we go this way, and then it's 1, 0 going up. So our first step is to try to turn this 2 into a 1. We could multiply through our first row by a half, but if you notice, that introduces a minus 3 halves into the second column. Okay, that entry there. So let's try something different. Let's first start by switching the rows. So that's my first move. Switch row 1 with row 2. That doesn't actually change our equations at all. All we did was change the order that the equations are written in. So for instance, if we have them written off on the side, that takes equation 1 to equation 2, equation 2 to equation 1. So no real change in what we're doing yet. Once I've done that, I can now multiply our first row by a minus 1 to put a 1 in our entry. No fractions. So we'll get second move, okay, multiply first row by a minus 1. That gives me 1 minus 2 minus 1. We take a look at the equations. We just changed equation 1 to x minus 2y equals a minus 1. Now, we have our 1, so our next step is to put a 0 where we have this 2. That's going to be our third row operation. That is, we can add multiples of a row to another row. So in this case, I want to add minus 2 times row 1 to row 2. Important thing to note, this changes row 2. It does absolutely nothing to row 1. Also, for this work, it's better to do it off on the side and then just come back to your matrix. When you do enough of these, you should be nimble to the point where you can just do it in your head. But to start out, you definitely want to do your work on the side. Now, I want row 2, so it's 2 minus 3, 2. We're going to take minus 2 row 1, so that's minus 2, 4, 2. We add, we get the 0 that we were promised, we get a 1 and a 4. So that's the new row 2. We put it in, what do we get? Okay, no change on row 1, and now equation 2 is going to be y equals 4. So we made a change to our equations. Also, having y equals 4, in practice, we could go back to this x equation, solve for x, and then we're done. Here, we want to just finish off doing all the row operations for practice. Okay, next step. You'll notice we got the 0 here. We get this 1 for free with our previous row operation. So all I have left is turn that minus 2 into a 0. Again, the same idea. We're going to add twice row 2 to row 1. No change on row 2. It only changes row 1. We do our work on the side. So I have row 1, so that's 1 minus 2 minus 1. 2 row 2 is 0, 2, 8. We add, we get the row 1, 0, 7. Replace row 1 with 1, 0, 7. Now you'll notice we have the identity matrix here. So we can peel off our solution. It's going to be x equals 7, y equals 4. Now, we always check our work. So I take that solution, put it back in the original equations, see if it works out. When I do that, we'll note, we'll have a 2 coming out from the first equation, a 1 coming out from our second equation, so our check works.